If there's one thing that speaks to me most about cinema, it would have to be the many facets that are explored when delving into abstract concepts such as the pain of loss, with films like A Monster Calls, or If Anything Happens I Love You being great examples of this. I love them even more so when they go out that one step further and explore the many ways in which people can make a slow and steady recovery. In that regard, Ryu to Sobakasu no Hime, literally translated as the dragon and the freckled princess, or to those of us in the west who are not Nihongo Jozu as simply Belle, is one of the more unique movies that has covered this topic that I've seen in the past few years. The newest film from legendary director Mamoru Hosoda, the man who brought us the well-loved classics of The Girl Who Left Through Time, Wolf Children, and the Oscar-nominated Mirai, and the seventh movie overall produced by Studio Chizu, a Japanese animation studio that have somehow found a way of marketing children fighting in the metaverse as an almost regular occurrence. They got to it first, Mark. I think it's time to let it go. Bell follows the story of Suzu Naito, a 17-year-old high school student who lives in the rural Koichi prefecture of Japan. When she was younger, she witnessed the untimely death of her mother as she attempted to save a stranded child from a flooding river. The traumatic experience leading Suzu to start resenting her mother for abandoning her, claiming she felt more love for a stranger's child than she did her own. Due to this trauma, she becomes withdrawn and physically unable to sing, stemming from the time she and her mother would spend together. The mere thought of having to do so now causes her to be violently sick. Alienated from most of her classmates, with the exception of her childhood friend Shinobu Hisatake and her best friend Hiroka Betsuyaku, she remains closed off and invisible to those around her, including her own father. One day, following Hiroka's suggestion, Suzu signs into Yu, a popular virtual world with over 5 billion registered users that features a revolutionary technology capable of biometric analysis. In order to create an AS, an idealized digital version of yourself that draws out that which the user wants most. Upon logging in, Suzu finds herself brought to life as a beautiful pink-haired songstress named Belle, who in her eyes bears more of a resemblance to her popular classmate Ruka than to the freckled nobody she sees herself as. In an emotional outcry, she discovers she is capable of singing once more like she used to. With her song going viral overnight, Suzu finds herself launched to a level of popularity she could only dream of. While intent on keeping Belle's identity a secret, she nonetheless delights in being able to sing once again, with a newfound confidence that is inaccessible to her in real life. During one of Belle's concerts, however, she is interrupted when a mysterious AS simply called the Dragon makes a violent appearance. A beastly avatar feared by Yu's users and being hunted by a self-righteous group of vigilantes led by a corporate-sponsored leader named Justin. Sensing there's more behind the dragon's anger than his monstrous reputation lets on, Suzu sets out to find the person behind the account in hopes of understanding their pain. One of the strongest aspects of Belle to me is the way in which it presents its characters a varied collection of personalities that gel together about as well as any real friendships do. That is to say, functionally dysfunctional. Whether it's Suzu's shy, awkward nature, Hiroka's eccentricity, Ruka's sick jazz skills, or Kamishin's laid-back dude-bro vibes, the characters all feel like someone you could run into in your local high street, which helps to ground the film and adds an extra layer of realism to the many interactions that they have. And while Belle and the Dragon's interactions take up most of the latter half of the film's screen time, it makes sure that these other relationships don't fall by the wayside, mostly in the way that it incorporates and handles its side characters throughout the story. One of the film's many triumphs definitely comes in the form of its surprising friendships and character interactions. Suzu's unexpected bond with her popular schoolmate Ruka Watanabe bucks conventional trends entirely, as it demonstrates to us that there's still room in this quiet and mousy girl's life for meaningful friendships when she begins to realise that she's worthy of others' time and starts putting herself out there. It's the small scenes like this where I think Hasoda's directing talent truly shines. One of my favourite scenes in the whole movie has a character freeze frame for over two minutes while the other characters around her deal with the situation going on. It's cute, full of charm, and surprisingly funnier than some actual comedies that I've seen lately. Belle has some truly heartfelt moments that arise throughout its runtime. The manner in which the beast's true identity is eventually revealed can be difficult to watch, but it also manages to both shine a light on the harrowing real-life subject and feels like a more realistic reveal than what we typically see in an animated series or film. If you're expecting feelings to blossom between certain characters, or the eventual culmination of character arcs in what can only be described as the biggest well duh ever seen by the end of the movie, you'll definitely come away from the experience somewhat satisfied with the 
the subversion and direction the film ultimately went in. Now, I consider myself a rather emotional individual. I want to pet every animal that I see, and I tear up at the mere thought of most emotional scenes in movie and TV. And I gotta say, I was an absolute mess towards the climax of this movie. The moment the chorus to A Million Miles Away started playing, I was in tears. Everything about the scene, the build-up, the emotions throughout, and the payoff were nothing short of beautiful. Bell's use of music throughout elevates the scenes within it to another level entirely when it comes to speaking to the audience. Whether that be Bell's realisation that she can sing again to my personal favourite song, Gales of Song, or the opening song You by Millennium Parade, whose lyrics speak on a much deeper level than its upbeat nature would have you believe. It all comes together to create an experience that you'll rarely see in films these days. That being said, this film has some rather glaring problems. The first of which, there is no denying, is the plot itself. I won't lie, Soda is a phenomenal director capable of portraying the rawest of emotions on screen that'll bring tears to the eyes of even the most stone-faced individual. His writing talents, on the other hand, are passable at best, for lack of a better term, with glaring plot holes and major conveniences that will tend to wrap themselves up neatly so long as you forget they were there. Bell clocks in at just under two hours in length, which is a long time to keep your plot moving, especially in an animated movie of all things which he does accomplish to varying success. His adherence to the original fairy tale, while also having three other plot threads running throughout, however, leads to a story that is mismatched and disjointed, resulting in tonal clashes and a confusing second act. This has happened in his previous movies too, mind you, but only the ones that he has solely written. Hasoda, please, you're allowed more than one writer in your production. The first hour of this film following Suzu and her growing popularity online genuinely felt like I was watching a masterpiece in the making. The exploration of how an online persona can help you break out of your shell in order to achieve your dreams is a notion that hits rather close to home. And the expectations of balancing both your real world responsibilities and growing online expectations is something that any YouTuber or creatively orientated individual can find agreement with, I'm sure. It's well paced, artistically thought out, and pulls at all the right heartstrings. It's a shame, therefore, that when the titular character of the dragon is introduced, the plot begins to fall apart completely. It doesn't take a genius to see that Belle takes a lot of inspiration from Beauty and the Beast. The movie isn't just based on the tale as old as time, it's a one-to-one -one recreation at times, ballroom scene and everything. That being said, don't mistake this film for a love story. Belle is a story of loss, abandonment, and how people learn to deal with these emotions over time. Suzu is a high school girl struggling to come to terms with the loss of her mother many years ago. Time has done little to mend her grief, and the one thing that could possibly help her heal causes her to mentally shut down. Through entering you and meeting the dragon, she finds a kindred spirit, and through learning about their pain and helping them overcome it, she hopes to be able to understand her own in a similar fashion. But this film is Beauty and the Beast, you know you love Beauty and the Beast. Look, we've got the ballroom scene and the starlight dance and the will they won't they kiss. Did we mention this is Beauty and the Beast? As I mentioned previously, while I was doing my best Earl Devereaux impression for the first half of this film's climax, the second half left me in a state of mild annoyance and disappointment. You spend a good portion of the film with this major build-up and a shocking reveal leading towards the film's culmination. And without spoiling too much, Suzu goes on a journey by herself to confront someone, in a manner none too similar than what her mother did. However, not only is this completely daft from a character perspective, but what was stopping any of the five parental figures that are important in her life that we we've seen throughout the movie from going with her. I know anime has to be anime sometimes with how it treats its leads, but come on. Not only is this irresponsible and dangerous as hell, but it's completely unrealistic. Oh no, there's only one train left, quick, let me drive you to the station and not get on the train with you to make sure you'll be safe. For a film that built up its real-world consequences and the actions of individuals, the climax of the film disregards these to give us an intended powerful moment that instead feels unearned and leaves us with way too many unanswered questions. With all that being said, do you want to know what my truly biggest criticism of this film is? You couldn't watch it anywhere. There I was after finding out the film had finally been released in the US, biding my time for that inevitable UK release that would come within the following weeks or months, and guess what? I don't live in London, so I was fresh out of luck. The only other showing that I was able to find was a midweek viewing at 4 in the afternoon at one, I repeat, one cinema, two and a half hours away. You're killing me with these releases, Japan.
If there's one thing I believe this film does deserve, it's to be experienced on the biggest screen you can find with a powerful enough sound system to truly immerse yourself in the music. The fact I wasn't able to experience the songs this way does feel a little disappointing, I won't lie. But then again, I probably would have been inconsolable by the end. The film is planned to be released in 4K ultra high def within the next few months though, so you already know your boy's grabbing himself a deluxe edition. At the end of the day, Bell is not the best Mamre Hosoda movie that I've seen. Its literal approach to shoehorning in the classical source material into a plot that's otherwise unrelated leaves it feeling clumsy and pretty awkward at times. With that being said, the utilisation of both visuals and sound is not only some of the best of Hosoda's career, but he utilises the medium in a fashion that I can't help but fall in love with. Many animated movies, even the best of them, feel as if each aspect is a wholly separate experience. Some have good writing, good animation, or good soundtracks, but Bell feels like a collected artistry. No single part feels like it can be separated from the larger work without something crucial being missing. It came out at a time when the world feels like it's never been further apart, with nothing but social media and our own heavily biased opinions on media to connect us. Bell feels like a clumsy but well-meaning lesson on how to merge the attachments that we feel in the virtual world to the ambitions we feel in real life. And while its story doesn't quite hit the mark, the music and vocal performances by the cast are more than enthralling enough to make it worth watching, just to experience what it has to say and the journey that it wants to take you on. 